I'm Brittany Davis, the founder and curator of Beyond the Lines Art Show. What made you want to become an artist? I want more of my work to be seen and uh, and the range of art, so like the, way to me the range of mediums I use, like painting or paint markers or spray paint. And uh, I had a job where I did a lot of painting at work and drawing at work, which is not really what you're supposed to do at work. <laughs> so I I found it that uh, going into something where my art can be seen, like in tattooing, where uh, I can make that into a career path. I figure this is the way to be an artist and still, you know, be able to have a job. What inspires you? Uh, a lot of things. Other artists, uh, a lot of moments. And as you get older, a lot of political things. <laughs> I feel like the older you get, the more you want to have something to say. Getting good at what you're doing um, or what you want to, um, like it be painting or color pencil or drawing. Learn that way you're young and get good at what you, you know, where you're comfortable. But to become an artist and have a style and have a voice, that comes with experience and age, you know. The more things that can uh, make you feel like you want to say something, then you'll know what to draw. Did you go to art school? I didn't, I did. I went for like four months, <laughs> couldn't afford it. Canberra University, San Francisco. Uh, I loved every minute there. I was, never thought I'd be starstruck meeting an artist. But uh, um, I follow David Chung Lee a lot with Jackson Pose and all that. And uh, to see him in real life, I was like, do you guys not see this person? <laughs> they're like, they're like he's, he walks in the room all casual. And everyone's just like, oh, look, the teacher's here. And I'm just like, do you see who this guy is? <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, I think that helps. Going to art school and the energy that like said, okay, this is getting more real. Like, you're following something you really want to do. And to be, not be able to, to stay, and complete the whole program and, and get a degree and all that kind of stuff. It it almost drives a fire to make you want to just do better. And so yeah, I met a lot of great people there, uh, a lot of friends I have to this day. And to follow them and watch them become better artists, you know, and talk to them, and know that you want to kind of stay on par a little bit. It's, it's cool. It's kind of it kind of drives drives you to be better. What do you do to push yourself? Um, just don't give yourself any limitations when it comes to. Uh, what you want to show, like um, if there's a large wall or a large canvas and you know you want to put something on there, like you walk by this wall every day to be in town and you're like, God, that needs something there. I don't know what, it needs something. Um, you know the long way would be using brushes. So maybe get into spray paint or uh, maybe a, a digital media where you can, you can we paste it up or something, you know, just expand your horizons and don't be limited by what your goal is, whether it be a, a wall or a metaphorical wall, <laughs> call it. Right. Yeah. So tell me more about your tattoo art. Um, it's all new to me at this point, but I love learning about uh, the history of it and what makes uh, a ta tattoo art tattoo art. Because a lot of artists, we always hear like, oh, you draw, you should draw my next tattoo. Or do you do tattoos? And you always have to say no. <laughs> and you realize that, oh, I realize now that coming into it, uh, there's a certain style and certain rules that apply to make it a tattoo and to make it the style that where it's going to stay in your body and last forever and all that kind of stuff. Learning to tattoo got me into watercolor and that was a really cool medium and uh, I find myself easy. It's, learning to tattoo helps you get to a kind of a system. Like tattooing is a business. There's a business before it was an art form. It's an art form and it became a business. So uh, it's really cool to learn how to like hear someone's ideas, be able to sketch them out and effectively get them to a point where you can be like, here's what you want, you know, or this is, this is what we can group on. And, uh, you know, going from like red pencil to a micron and then watercoloring it, um, it's just, it cleans it up every step of the way. It's like going analog from what digital is, you know, instead of having layers and, uh, and files, you can do all that with layers of paper and mediums, you know, to get to a successful picture. How old were you when you started creating art? I think we all start as kids. <laughs> yeah. I think we all start as kids, and I think we all stop at some point. Yeah. And uh, for me, uh, stopping and then coming back to it, you know, like in different grades and whatever, you have other interests. You might have started drawing scribbles and ended up drawing Nintendo cartridges, or for me, <laughs> Nintendo cartridges. <laughs> and uh, uh, 
you know, skate magazine pictures and stuff. And uh, it's important to just try to pick up where you left off, you know. I stopped plenty of times, and every time I come back to it, uh, you know, it comes out better or to put more time into it. That's where experience comes, your age comes into, like, what you're trying to convey, you know. How do you advertise your art? Instagram is huge. It's just so convenient. Everyone's got a phone. Take a picture of what you're working on. And uh, I use uh, Instagram a lot, but I also like to just make copies, uh, prints of my work and just give it out and talk about it. So Instagram's effective for uh, a vague amount of people to see it, but uh, hands-on is really just the best way. Where do you give it up? Um, California has a, like, a lot of art walks now all over, and it's great to just go out and uh, it's a good opener. Like, you know, conversations start like, oh, hello, here's my, you know, take a look at this, you can have it if you like it. Um, so art walks, uh, conventions, uh, art gathering was in San Diego, or uh, art gathering was in Long Beach, and uh, it was cool to pass that out and meet other tattoo artists as well as other artists. It'll give you a, uh, it's an opening to, to kind of let them know who you are and what you're doing. Right. You know, and they can check your Instagram out that way too. Is there an artist that's a role model for you? I've met the ones, I'm, my role models I met right now. Uh, at Art Gathering, there was uh, Ron English, and he does uh, kind of pop surrealism, and uh, it was an honor to meet him. Uh, I moved out to California about a year ago, and uh, within this year, I've met, you know, just Soto, Skinner, Ron English, and these are people I look up to as street artists and artists, and uh, meeting them really kind of helps you want to, like, just excel and just keep going. Awesome. Have you had good experiences selling your work online or in person? Um, online, uh, not so much luck. Uh, you get a lot of like likes and views, and everyone wants to email you or uh, and you know try to like lead you on to a sale. I feel uh, for me, just like the with prints and uh, and advertising myself, uh, it's just hands on. Uh, I've sold maybe three paintings now, going into a year of painting. And uh, it's all been, uh, you know, word of mouth. Just kind of go to a place and be like, this place needs some art. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you can talk with them and see, you know, of course they want art. Right. And they'll tell you their idea. And you'll say, okay, and but don't just let them know that you work on that for a week and give them give them an idea and just come back and you'll, you'll have a sell. If you, you sell yourself, you'll sell your art. How do you price your work? Um... Right now, I'm currently pricing myself on experience. I feel like I'm new to painting as far as uh, what I can achieve. And I feel like, don't short yourself, make sure your time is counted for. But uh, find yourself based on the time you put in and what you think your experience is worth. Uh, I do most of my paintings within a week time, you know, a couple hours here, a couple hours there. And I'll sell them for, I'd like to just put it at like 300. That's kind of like a base. Like my time is worth 300, so whatever I put into that painting can go from there. What are some good and bad experiences you've had showing your work? Um, no bad experiences. Okay. Just um, critiques. I like to hear. You know, uh, sometimes the crowd favorite isn't the one I, I expect. You know, yeah. I'm like, well, look at this one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, they go, oh, this one's cool. The colors or they recognize the hypno toad or the look, whatever's in there that they recognize and it becomes a crowd favorite. Do you have any advice for artists out there? Keep dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to keep, keep creating art, whether anyone sees it or not. To check out some of Henry's work, click on the link below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our page, and to get more information on Beyond the Lines Art Show, visit beyondthelinesartshow.com Instagram at Beyond the Lines Art Show. Bye!